and we are the Pattern Queens and welcome to Stitch With Us video number three. Today is Sunday, December the 13th, 2020, and this is a channel about cross stitch. And friendship and silliness and rambles and lots and lots and lots of shenanigans. Always, always shenanigans and definitely rambles in these ones. Yes. So if you're new, welcome. If you're old, welcome. If you're somewhere in between, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we have picked up several viewers lately. So thank you for subscribing. Yeah. Yes, and, thank you for being here. Um, we hope you have fun with us. We've decided to change up our format a little. We do a floss tube on all but the second and fourth uh, weeks of the month. And then we do this stitch with us. Yeah, so we're just going to stitch on some projects and answer. I found a Christmas tag online. Oh, I just found a Christmas tag because this is our last Stitch With Us video before Christmas. So I thought that was appropriate. Wow, does that seem weird? It does seem weird. <laughs> so, but first things first, um, I am on the nice list for the Black Needle Society, have the nice list box. And I've been opening the presents every day. Um, usually they're the standalone videos, just a couple minutes. If you haven't been watching them, you should only because my kid is in most of them and he plays with the wrapping paper and it's just kind of fun to watch whatever. It is, he's like, it's like so fun. <laughs> so, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and open this one on here today. And this is number 13. I'm and very, I, will not, I will not make nearly as cute faces as James, so. You're cute, Laura. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's fun fabric. I'm pulling this out because, you know, we're stitchers. We, we need to look at the entire yes. thing. Oh, look at this. I mean, it's not really showing up super well on camera, but it's like, it's a nice gray, like a nice natural gray. I am excited for whatever goes on here. <laughs> so um, I guess I should probably scratch off and see what. Yeah, uh, see what it what says to you. Fabric this is. Yeah, I'm just oh, well, trying I not to say much of anything, so. <laughs> Oh goodness, this is 40 count driftwood linen from Color and Cotton. That's gonna be fun. I've never actually worked on Color and Cotton linen before. Oh, I love I, it. I've only gotten their even weave. So this is gonna be exciting. And it is for a blue flower design. So the way the box looks like it's set up, it looks like I get the fabric today, the floss tomorrow or the fancy floss tomorrow. And then uh, the next day I'll get the pattern. So I'm very excited. That'll be fun. Hey, and I should tell you, you said you hadn't stitched on color and cotton linen. You need to go to your mailbox before oh. next week. Okay, <laughs> will do. Cause I know I, I tend to get my uh, fabric of the month just like a day or so before you, right? Or- I think so. right we, I guess we never know because you haven't been to your mailbox, but I know that usually when I get mine, if you go to your mailbox, yours is there, there. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. So and okay. we both have some to show. Ooh um, so I'm working on this stocking sled from Lizzie Kate. And this is where I'm starting today. Look at you. <laughs> So awesome. I'm going to put this one more in and then my um, floss will be on the back. How about that? All right. Sounds good to so me. So I am doing Lizzie Kate. It <laughs> Not just planned. Out that, yeah. Just <laughs> out that way. B blocks. And I am doing the green B Mary. They're both so cute, but I let Keisha choose. And her favorite color is green. So of course mm -hmm. I'm doing this. And I am here. This morning I've been putting in um, the fat R over here ah. and I will move on here in just a minute. It's not quite all in, but it's close. Mm -hmm. So, All right, are you ready for some Christmassy questions? I'm gonna get a drink. 
All right, get a drink. Everyone grab your drinks. I have um, an apple and sage latte from, uh, there's a, well, it's in North Kansas City. It's this place called Cultivar. It used to be called Colony and they um, are partnering with Post Coffee Company. So that's who is um, in that space right now. And this is pretty good. <laughs> so awesome um, i should tell you guys too that i'm gonna turn this down just for a second sorry pardon my hand i have on my christmas shirt nice and this is my favorite christmas carol so katie got me this last awesome. year so, i and this is probably what i'll wear the next time you see me for oh. yeah probably next week and the week after because you know you don't <laughs> get to wear them very often right I wore my favorite Christmas shirt yesterday. We went with, <laughs> um, we went and looked at Christmas lights yesterday. So we were all dressed up. James has some Christmas pajamas that have a reindeer on them that Aww. he wore whenever we were out because they are nice and warm. But we, we also bought, and he might wear it in one of the videos, we'll see. I bought, found this onesie at Target that has, you'd like it because it has a little reindeer on it. <laughs> and it says silent night. And then in uh, parentheses, it says not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy the lights? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We went to um, a place called the Deanna Rose Children's Bar. Oh, that's an awesome place. Yeah. And we've never been there, you know, just to, I guess, see the children's barn, but they had a huge light show projected onto the barn and uh, did all kinds of songs. They even did, they did things from Star Wars. <laughs> like, well, I don't think about the Imperial March as terribly Christmassy, but <laughs> it was fun but anyway. You to turn it down, right? Yeah. And um, and so it was one of those you pull up and you play um, the sound through your car radio and just watch the light show. And it was probably 15 or 20 minutes. And so we took James out of the out of the car seat and he sat up with us and watched the lights. And he was just fascinated wow. for about for about five to 10 minutes. And then he decided he was hungry. <laughs> that was it. He'd had enough of it. He's like, um, I'm out of my my car seat now, and this seems like prime eating opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> so Deanna Rose Farm is a great fun place. When my youngest was uh, in preschool, um, we went there for a field trip, and I had a little disposable camera, so I handed that off, and all day long she took pictures of things at her level and oh, I put things funny. at my level and you know I had a disposable camera so I didn't really have to worry about it right and it was the most fun thing and I have some great pictures from the day That's um, cool. from both of us because you know it's cool if you think about it and you can do it you know give your give your child something to take pictures and let them do it at their at their level because i mean we were a couple feet apart right so Fun. it was great and it was um it was like a bit of serendipity because when the photos were developed and you know i had no idea what was in there because it was before digital for sure right um right. but when the photos were developed i just had all of this fun stuff to use for my scrapbooks Right. Well, and it's interesting to see what a kid finds worthy of taking pictures of too, you know? Yes. It was a fun one. That's fun. I'm excited to go and um, do that sort of thing whenever James is a little bit older. We took him to um, a pumpkin patch around Halloween time and they had some animals out there. <laughs> But, you know, he's little. So he was more fascinated by the tarp that was over where the ducks were because it was really windy that day and it kept blowing the tarp. So the tarp was making a lot of fun noises. <laughs> That's funny. So. All right. Well, let's 
answer some Christmas questions. The first one on here is what's your favorite holiday movie? Ooh, for Christmas. Wow, we have so many. I always have a hard mm -hmm. time with this. Um, I like silly movies like Jingle All the Way. Oh, yeah. But I also really love um, White Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, old classic. Right. And um, both versions of Miracle on 34th Street. Look, I'm going to name every movie. That's so okay. It's okay. You can name every movie. It's fine. <laughs> and then, you know, the the ever popular Christmas movie, Die Hard. Always. Always a staple <laughs> in our house also. <laughs> so I could name way more, but how about you, Keisha? I'm sure you'll name my favorites too. Well, um, I never let a Christmas season go by without watching the animated How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the mm -hmm. older one with Boris Karloff. How Boris Karloff was a silent movie actor, just it breaks my heart because he has the best voice. <laughs> um, but we, I always watch that. Like I pretty well know that movie by heart. I, it's just one of my favorites. And the... Um, <laughs> the you're a mean one Mr. Grinch song I love it and fun fact if you don't know it sung by the man who voices Tony the Tiger in the Frosted Flakes commercials well I'm sure that's great <laughs> and um and then we always watch the uh the Peanuts uh Merry Christmas Charlie oh, Brown yes very important yes. to watch and I think, I mean, I, we watch quite a few Christmas movies. Um, we also really like um, White Christmas in our house, but it's those animated classics that, you know, always kind of bring me back to when I was younger. And those are my favorites. And I'm excited to share those with James when he gets a little bit, well, we'll watch him this year, but yeah, you know, when he gets a little bit older. Oh, we tend to have family movie nights um, and we especially try to do that during the Christmas season. So that's why we have so many because we will watch movies together, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes two or three in an evening, depending on how soon we get started. So nice. All right. The next question on here, and it's probably not going to be that hard of a choice. What's your favorite Christmas color? So what do you think of as Christmas colors? Do you think of just red and green or do you think of other colors? Do you associate other colors with Christmas? Um, well, I like lots of color all the time. Right. Um, my reds and greens probably tend more toward this. I mean, mm -hmm. you can see the red and green here, mm -hmm. but also up there is my Rocky Mountain Christmas. Yeah, uh, that one kind of challenged me because that house is really pink. And then like huh. those on the fence posts are definitely red. Right. So, but um, I have, I don't think it's, I was trying to see where it is. Oh, I have the Mary Inglebright Believe. It's way over on a wall over here. And it's, um, it's got a lot of purple in it which I don't oh. know that I thought of as a Christmas color, but it's in there with red and there's Santa. You should look up the picture. Uh, it's in there with red and green and yellow, some white, so. I think of, um, besides red and green, I think of silver and gold. You know the songs, yes. silver and gold, silver and gold from the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Right. <laughs> So I think of that um, too. Burl Ives. Yes, good old Burl Ives. That's another Christmas movie that I always seem to watch during the Christmas season. My That's one of my dad's favorites. <laughs> um, but my favorite color is green. So obviously that is my favorite Christmas color because <laughs> it's my favorite all the time color. So are you like red and green or are you more like Victorian? more like the, the burgundy-ish and, you know, slightly different green. 
See, I think of definitely like more of a forest green feels more Christmassy to me. So maybe the more Victorian sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But a lot of our decorations are more of just like crayon box green red, you know. Yes. Because crayon box green is my favorite green. (laughs) The next question is, do you stay in your pajamas on Christmas or do you dress up or what do you usually do? Uh, We are normally um, at home on Christmas and we try to stay in the pajamas or the loungers pretty much all day. Mm. Um, We don't really go anywhere on Christmas anymore. We usually have had Um, any Christmas celebrations that we're going to have ahead of time. So it is just whoever's in this house is who we're spending the day with. And we're all just in our jammas. And I like, I wear a nightgown to bed, but when I am up, I am in loungers for the day. So. Right. Yeah. We, um, we go to my parents' house on Christmas Eve. So whenever we wake up, it's whatever pajamas we were wearing. And we all um, open up our presents at my parents' house in our pajamas. And then we go to my aunt and uncle's house to have like a Christmas celebration with um, my extended family. And so we do get dressed for that. We don't stay in pajamas. <laughs> No PJs, huh? Yeah. No. Though one of these days we should, because I feel like usually uh, one or more of my cousins are still in their pajamas when we go to their house. That only seems fair, right? I know. So I'm like, I could be in my Grinch pajamas. (laughs) (laughs) One year before, I think before kids, uh, we went over to Jeff's parents on Christmas morning. And we had gotten up that day and just said, you know what, let's go in our PJs. And I had gotten this big, um, heavy flannel. So not a flimsy flannel, but like a, a stiffer flannel, red and white striped nightgown that came Mm -hmm. down about mid calf. And I pulled on like some leggings or something under it, but we showed up in our pajamas. Jeff stayed in his pajama pants and whatever. I I don't remember if he had a full set of pajamas or what, but that was our thing. And we just walked in the door and stayed like that all day. Oh, nice. See, I have married into a family that have like Christmas shirts and Christmas socks and all these other kind of things. So whenever I go to my in-laws house, I have, well, my husband and his sister both have um, peanuts Christmas shirts. And just because I like peanuts even before I started dating my husband, I have a, a Charlie Brown tree Christmas sweatshirt. Aww. So I've just started wearing that. And then um, it's maybe my second Christmas with my husband's family, whenever we were still dating, I had mentioned that I didn't have any Christmas socks. And so my mother-in-law bought me these Christmas socks. So I wear those. So that's kind of what we do there. So we're going to have to, I guess we just bought James a Christmassy onesie, but we might have to buy a peanuts one so that he kind of fits in with everyone else. So he can be nutty like everybody else. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right. The next question it's going to be hard because you have two children. So <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> if you could only buy one person a present this year, who would it be? Ooh. And remember that Katie's the one who edits this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So if I could only buy one person a present this year, mm-hmm. I would. Um, I would love for it to be oh. to get a home mercy on. Oh no! <laughs> uh, 
I would love the opportunity to buy a present for my parents again. Oh, yeah. Whew. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you got me all emotional because I'm like, what would I buy my grandpa if I could buy my grandpa yeah. something? I always, um, I always tried to make my grandpa something. Oh, fun. He, um, he loved watching me stitch. And so I would make him, I'd usually do more like needle point and like canvas crafts around him because it was easier for him to see. But I had always tried it like I made him this big um, needle point box once and showed him how to do all of the different stitches on it. Oh, because, cool. Uh, he was just interested. He was interested in that. <laughs> so now I'm all emotional thinking about that <laughs> <laughs> oh you know we get asked so many questions like and at work we just had the if you could have lunch with anybody who would it be right and so that's kind of been on my brain since we did that yeah so, sorry about that we'll just no. you know <laughs> I know all the feels are good and that's right fine, but whoo <sighs> Okay, who would your one be for? Well, I, well, actually, I'd probably buy something for Timothy and let James have the wrapping paper. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, and we were having that discussion right beforehand that mm -hmm. um, Katie and I have really been enjoying watching people open their boxes. And we have gotten a real kick out of it because we talk about how kids like the wrapping but adults like the wrapping just as much. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, it's fun whenever you get a gift that is really nicely wrapped and, you know, that someone took the time to pick out really nice wrapping paper. So this isn't a question on the list, but are you a just tear into the wrapping paper sort of person or do you neatly unwrap things? Oh, no, no, I'm a tear in. See, I, me you know, too. <laughs> there are times when I can tell like the big heavy paper is mm -hmm. going to just like untape and slide off. Mm -hmm. And I will do that sometimes just because it's so hard to tear. Yeah. See, I am also a tear into it sort of person, but my husband is not. Oh, my husband is a like very nicely untape things and unwrap it and which I think is funny because I don't really see other people in his family doing that. So that just must be a my husband thing. So I keep teasing him that I'm gonna teach James how to unwrap presents. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel it's almost undignified to use that much care <laughs> in unwrapping presents. I'm looking at this and realizing, did I just look at the, oh, no, it's okay. I'm messing okay. myself up. They have both Anchor and um, DMC listed. Oh, right. I evidently saw the Anchor number and so couldn't figure out why I didn't have floss. Oh, I do that sometimes, too. Um, the frosted pumpkin patterns have um the cosmo floss conversion uh -huh. on it and yeah i'll be looking at it i'll be like i don't have the right color for this i thought i bought the right color or i buy the wrong color because look at it. It. yeah mm -hmm. okay you asked me that question about um unwrapping so i gotta ask you this okay um in jeff's family they were always a one person at a time unwraps Oh, and, and you only unwrap one present and it's like mm -hmm. you go around and around and around until you run out of gifts. And once we had kids and it got bigger, then we switched to uh, two people at a time. And then when there were all of the kids, we switched to the kids all get to open, but they opened in pairs. Oh. And then we sent them out of the room. And then the adults had time and we got to do our thing. So are you guys in your family gatherings one at a time or is it a free for all? Well, we're one at a time. And on uh, 
my on my side of the family my and I mean we're all grown James is the first baby in a while but my mom really likes to watch everyone open their presents yeah so we will um it's usually my youngest brother he'll get underneath the tree and he'll get a present for everyone pass a present one present out to each person and then we take turns opening up the present and then we'll do that again um it's for my mom so that my mom can see us open everything and then um in my husband's family basically you get all of your presents so you get just a pile and then yes they say go and you just open all your presents oh my gosh <laughs> so, which is a lot of fun and my mother-in-law is smart and she just picked out a different kind of wrapping paper for each person and so we each have our own wrapping paper that we get because my um my niece likes to help pass out presents my my older niece and so before she could really read our names on things it was easier for her to help pass out by you know what is this paper who already has a package with that paper on it go take that to that person that's good yeah Uh, my mother-in-law always had something fun for the kids the kids presents were always wrapped in you know just something fun so my go go ahead Oh, my mom has started last or a couple of years ago, she started us playing this game where she wraps a gift card in several layers of uh, wrapping paper. And you, um, you have to wear oven mitts and try to unwrap the present. But the person next to you is trying to roll dice to get doubles. And if they get doubles, then you have to pass it on to the next person. It's it's a great big mess, but it's a lot of fun. I've heard a version of that game. Um, I really enjoy the wrapping paper. And, you know, it takes forever to wrap presents. Oh, yeah. And so um, I am always the person who, like, If I came to your house, I would go look at all your pretty wrapping paper and see what kinds of things you like to use. I would Mm. be standing at your tree and, you know, I don't care who the packages are to that. I'm never looking for a tag. I'm always just looking at what designs are on the paper. And I just, I enjoy it because there's so much pretty wrapping and, you know. It's just a, it's a way for me to, to kind of have a quiet moment in the middle of chaos. (laughs) Yeah. So definitely. All right. The next question is, do you open presents on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning? Oh, Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. And um, the funny thing for us is that, you know, Jeff and I are not real late sleepers although he's gotten to be a later sleeper than I will probably ever be but our kids were never up oh really so (laughs) we would always be you know waiting and we kind of got in the habit that we would go ahead and get up and start some coffee and um Jeff will usually make pull aparts, mm-hmm. monkey bread, whatever you call it. And he would have had that all ready to go. And so he's usually in there throwing stuff in the oven. And like the kids, when they were little, would sleep through all of that. Oh, wow. And we would be done and waiting for them. But then sometimes, if they would wake up before we got finished, they couldn't come in. To the mm-hmm. living room until we told them they could because of course oh. we wanted to see their faces right so when it was just katie she would wait back there pretty patiently and when brendan came along she would be saying brendan brendan and he would she would coax him and he would dash across the hall to her room <laughs> and so then we would hear you know this riotous giggling from back in Katie's bedroom 
and they would just be having the best time in there. And we would say, okay, you could come in. And they would just come tearing down the hall to come in for Christmas. So fun. See, we would try to convince my parents that we could open one present on Christmas Eve. <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. But I come from a family of, um, well, it's the women in my family who are very much like, I got you a present. Do you want to open it right now? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. We just love giving giving gifts. And um, so my mom is always like, they can open one of their presents. And my dad's like, they can wait until tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um but we kind of had the opposite problem in our house where we were definitely all awake. The kid, I have two younger brothers. We were awake. We were ready for Christmas presents. And um, my mom would fill our stockings and always like, well, my mom is kind of a last minute gift wrapper. And so uh, she would stay up late. We weren't allowed in my, pre my parents' room um on Christmas Eve and she, and whenever she finally got done wrapping we would already be in bed and she would put out our stocking and so then whenever we woke up first thing in the morning we were allowed to get into our stockings which usually had like some small gift and some candy I mean still does and uh and then we my dad has worked overnights since I was really little and so we'd usually be waiting for dad to come home uh. from work so that we could start opening up presents. And, uh, but if it was a year where my dad had that night, had that day off, we were just sitting, trying to be patient, waiting for my dad to wake up so that we could start <laughs> opening presents. Uh, my kids have always had two stockings. So they have a regular size stocking mm -hmm. And then they have always had one that's like one of those huge three foot stockings. Oh, really? And Santa left a gift in that stocking, mm -hmm. so, you know, and sometimes a bigger gift and mm -hmm. sometimes a gift that didn't fit. And so that stocking would be over whatever part of the gift that it could be. Yeah. But um, we, um, we don't always do stockings first. Oh. we sometimes have to wait and Jeff's family we all had matching stockings and we had to wait until the end to go get them oh uh, see stockings are first in both both Christmases that I go to um my mother-in-law has cross-stitched uh the girls have one type and the boys have another type but they're both Snoopy stockings fun and it's funny it's kind of a running joke in our in the family that you have to wait a while before you can get a stocking because I mean it's cross stitching a stocking it takes a while to do yeah but so my when my brother-in-law married into the family and that this was before I'd even met my husband uh my mother-in-law's like okay gotta gotta stitch a stocking for him then my sister-in-law got pregnant and grandkids take precedence over um, the, you know, the adults. So she's like, well, I gotta, I gotta make Lucy's stocking. So she started stitching that up and then she started working on my brother-in-law's stocking. And then my sister-in-law was pregnant again. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure if they've been married maybe seven or eight years. I don't know how long, but this is going to be, um, my mother-in-law finished my brother-in-law's stocking, like the actual stitching on it last year, but didn't have it sewn together yet. Uh -huh. So this will be his first year with the stocking. Wow. And since he married into the family before me, you know, my stocking was waiting on his stocking and now we have a James. So <laughs> it'll probably be a while before I get one. I cross-stitched stockings for each of our family members. So mm -hmm. Jeff's was when it was just the two of us and Katie's was when it was just her. And actually I had stitched Jeff's from the um, Cross Stitch and Country Crafts Heirloom Stocking Series. Mm -hmm. So Jeff's is the holiday study 
And there was a lot of work in that. And it's before I was an Ada stitcher. And so when I got to Katie's, I thought, oh, you know, maybe I'll do this on an even weave because it'll probably be sturdier than linen. Ugh, you know my feelings about yeah how it feels to me. I don't like the synthetic-ish feel. Yeah. And um, so actually, I think I had nice fabric, but they didn't have a, a stocking in the series that I thought was appropriate for her. Mm. So I had um, I had found another stocking that was a bear with a frilly pink ruff around its neck sitting on top of a rocking horse. And then most of the rest of the stocking is this huge Christmas tree with a big pink quilt back behind it. And so I stitched that and right as I finished it, they came out with um, a little girl's bedroom oh. in the series. So I set that aside and I started over and made her the stocking from the series. Mm -hmm. And so when, um, when Brendan came along, we just used the very frilly girly stocking and because that's what was done. And I, they had come out with the boys bedroom by then. Right. So I had started on that and, um, then I sent it off in a round robin. So it's been around the world. Wow. It's still not quite finished. And now it will need modifications, but you know, right. that's okay. Yeah. Someday, someday. Yeah. <laughs> I know I have, um, I bought a couple of dimensions kits to make Timothy and I stockings. And now we have James. So now I just have to decide what, what I'm gonna do. Oh, I know. I did think about doing the um, Shepherd's Bush stockings because <laughs> you do them on like 18 count fabric over two so that they come out. That's that's how they're suggested so that they will come out big. Yeah. And um, you use like pearl cottons. So it goes pretty fast and they're big chunky things. And they've made them for all of the I think for all of the grand, all of the children and all of the grandchildren and the parents mm -hmm. in the family. But, you know, I had already made Jeff's and I'm like, well, I'm not going to start over. Right. So especially those, those stockings, because they seem to have a lot of detail and everything in them. They seem like they'd take a long time. They do. They take a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, the next question is, have you ever built a gingerbread house? Yes. Um, and I have, I have been involved, sorry, I'm counting there. I have been involved in making the gingerbread houses. And I've also been involved in buying the mix to make the gingerbread house. Mm -hmm. So, um, that was kind of a Jeff and Katie thing. And I let that be because I was the cookie maker at the house, yes. not, not necessarily the gingerbread cookies, but the Christmas cookies. And um, in our school system and probably in a lot of school systems, I'm gonna make sure I did this right. Yeah. Um, they have kids save a milk carton and they get them all rinsed out and let them dry so they sit you know this is like a week-long process but then they um um have they assign each kid in class something to bring mm -hmm. some sort of candy or frosting or whatever and then um they use the milk carton to attach graham crackers to the outside oh, fun and then you know lots of icing so that you can glue everything together mm -hmm. and then the kids always get to pick what candies they want to put on and they're 
candies left at their desk. So like mini M&Ms and gumdrops and you know just all sorts of stuff, peppermint discs, whatever the kids bring. Rolos are usually popular to make like a path up to the house because you get to put it on some flat piece of cardboard. Yeah. So it was fun to see those come home from school. And now I work at a school and I get to see those in some classes. So. Yeah. So it's funny that you say that because the only time I've ever built a gingerbread house is at school. Huh. Um, so whenever I was in high school, my German class would always make gingerbread houses. And my, um, my teacher would make the um make the icing and the gingerbread and then we were put into well we got to choose our own groups so your group would just pick was responsible for bringing in whatever things to decorate and then she would bring some extra things too and uh and so we'd spend one of our class periods in december making these gingerbread houses and then we just leave them in her classroom and until the next time, because we had alternating days. So we'd have her class every other day so that everyone could look at everyone else's house. Huh. That was that a lot of fun. fun. Yeah. We also, um, we would also make paper shoes. Ooh, because, interesting. Yeah, because in, um, I guess in Germany, you get presents and candy and things in your shoes. And so, um, so we, everyone would make paper shoes and we called our German teacher Frau. Frau would put candy and presents in the shoes for everyone. Well, and fun. yeah, and it, it was really funny. So Frau was one of those teachers that like even the kids who didn't maybe get along so well in other classes, uh, they loved her, they loved her. They would sometimes act up in class, but everyone respected her. <laughs> and so the kids who were a little bit bad and disruptive would get coal in their shoes. Oh, <laughs> but it was coal bubble gum. So it was gum <laughs> that looked like coal. And it was just like a good nature thing. Like she wasn't trying, you know, to make anyone feel upset. And it was just kind of the funny thing because she was definitely one of those teachers that like I said, if, if you were a kid who got in trouble a lot in other classes, you didn't get in trouble in her class because she was pretty patient and she was a lot of fun. So usually those kids liked her. And I liked her too, as the goody two-shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you wouldn't think that I was a goody two-shoes in school at all. Me either. <laughs> The next question is, what do you like to do on your Christmas break? This is a good question for you because you actually still get a Christmas break. So what do you like I to do? I do. Um, well, last year, Katie and I decided that we would shut down Love You More mm -hmm. um, for the time during winter break from school. And so um, I ended up... I. The first week I ended up catching up, making sure everything was completely done and worked a little ahead. But I had lots of days in there that I could take to um, stitch and bake and whatever I wanted to do. And we even <clears throat> historically have planned a trip to um, a cross stitch shop that would maybe take a whole day. Mm -hmm. And we would check it out ahead of time and um, we would go down, make sure they were going to be open and go and visit another shop. And I really enjoy that. Yeah. You don't get a break anymore. I don't get a break anymore. Well, City Hall is closing on uh, Christmas Eve. So that's pretty exciting in my world. That means we get to go to my parents' house a little bit earlier. But whenever I was younger, when I'd have Christmas break from school, uh, usually my middle brother and I would always like have a couple of days where we just played video games together. 
Uh-huh. So we basically just, you know, hunker down with, well, and we didn't even really, I mean, cause we're younger at this time. So we don't have our own money to like go buy snacks and things, but we'd, you know, get, um, get a drink from the kitchen, get some snacks and then only really stop to uh, eat dinner. We'd go up and we'd eat dinner really fast. And then we'd go back into the room and play more video games. Cause they were, it, the video games were in, um, well, they were in kind of the playroom. I had a brother who, um, he didn't really sleep in his room. So his room was more of a playroom at the time he's older now and he sleeps in his own room but <laughs> at the time um it was just kind of the playroom and that was where the video games were set up so we would just go in there and just spend all day in there playing video games together and that was a lot of fun we still um my husband and I will take like our switch or something to my parents house and try to play video games with my brothers while while we're there just because that's fun mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out what I have done well I was uh sitting here working on mine and um <clears throat> it is not going to be exact exactly like it was designed ah uh, yep I have found one of those in this too It'll be all right. Yeah, somewhere in here I got my lettering off, but it's not going to make that big a difference. So I'm just going with it. <laughs> so I'm going to show you what I have done. <laughs> oh, he's holding this little candy cane, right? Uh huh. That candy cane is supposed to be here and look like it's actually on his hand. And instead it's in front of his arm. <laughs> I don't know what has happened. <laughs> so it looks like he's just got his arm hooked around his candy cane. It's, a, you it, know, he's like, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Now you all know that I've messed up on it, but no one else will. <laughs> yeah, I evidently made uh, some sort of error in my placement of my lettering. Mm. But we're just not going to let that bother us. Yeah. I mean, I could take this candy cane out, but maybe I'm just going to leave it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> I'm trying to decide if I am going to finish this off outside of our uh, videos. Although I probably wouldn't um, get it, get anything done with it this year anyway. So Maybe I'll just finish it on that last video this month. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just keep Christmas going. Cause that's what I'm thinking too. I'll probably finish this up on our next video. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Depends if I keep putting candy canes in the wrong place. I know I've got, <laughs> well, and I'm looking, I have to do the solid, I'm on this pink box now. Oh, okay. So oh, I have to be do, a while. yeah, it's, um, it's a little bigger than, you know, uh, that's a lot that it's, there you go. Right. That's a long way to go across. So and yeah, I I, a lot of I, times. Yeah. I now have like a border around the whole thing and then to fill in. So nah, we'll I'll have it. a little border too. So mm -hmm. not bad. All right, I think I'm gonna ask two more questions and then we'll probably wrap it up. Okay. So I'm gonna, there are several more questions. So I'm gonna figure out what, uh, we already know what your favorite Christmas song is, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Uh -huh. And that's from Meet Me in St. Louis mm -hmm. and Judy Garland sang that one. So I've always, always loved that. Right. I really like little drummer boy and obviously you're a mean one mr grinch <laughs> and the muppets singing the 12 days of christmas it makes me <laughs> laugh every time <laughs> and we know that if it makes you laugh yeah yep 
Um, okay. What is your favorite winter fragrance? Ooh. I really like, um, there was, <laughs> this is funny. There was a, like an air freshener that was frosted pine. Mm -hmm. And I love that, but I also love the smell of cinnamon. Mm -hmm. So if we get cinnamon going, I am generally pretty happy. Yeah, I think cinnamon is my favorite as well. And then um, I really like, like the smell of cider. So like apples and cinnamon yes. and all that kind of thing. That's yep, definitely. We'll sometimes put that on the stove to warm up and mm -hmm. we will just smell it all day. So yeah. that's definitely a me sort of smell. I love that. All right. And then you told me I had to ask you this question when Christmas time came around. What's your favorite Christmas memory, Laura? Um, oh man. I was trying to think what I, what I came up with for that. Oh, oh, I know. I think I've told this story before. So um, I have stork scissors and not this pair because I had to get a second pair, but you know, I bought it in honor of that one. Um, the year that I was pregnant with Katie, my mother-in-law bought me those stork scissors. And you guys, this one's going to make me cry because I get real emotional about it. But my sister-in-law and brother-in-law had been trying and trying and trying to get pregnant and just had not had any success. And um, she is the sister-in-law who taught herself to cross stitch so that we could go to um, the big Spirit of Cross Stitch Festival up in Des Moines one year. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, pretty awesome, right? Right. So she saw my scissors during that trip and she's like, well, where'd you get your stork scissors? And I said, you know, I don't know where they came from because mom got them for me. And she goes, oh, well, maybe she'll get me some. And um, so I said, well, you know, with not, without even thinking, I said, oh, I got them the year I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And then it hit me, oh, and she's like, oh, well, maybe I'll be lucky and I'll get them. <clears throat> you know, she was thinking maybe they would finally get pregnant. Right. So I went home and I told my mother-in-law this whole thing. And she said, you know what? I'm just going to get her a pair for good luck. And so, because, you know, we all knew, I mean, the infertility thing is real and the struggle out there it's a lot of emotions and right. yeah so christmas morning came around and we're all sitting around and i've already told you we you know we do christmas one package at a time so katie was maybe we had two grandkids by then katie and then jeff's sister and her husband had a son but we're sitting opening things and we came to Karen and I knew which package it was by the size of everything down there. And so she opens her package and, you know, she's just taken the lid off of the, of the box and she claps her hand over her mouth and her eyes fill and she is immediately crying. I'm crying. My mother-in-law is crying. We're just like, sobbing mm -hmm. and Karen gets up and my mother-in-law gets up and they meet in the middle and they're just hugging hugging and mom is whispering stuff in her ear you know they're talking to each other and Jeff's brother who is you know the husband of this woman <laughs> leans over towards us and says I think I worked way too damn hard on gifts <laughs> And he just had no idea. And so when Karen finally got herself composed again, you know, she's like getting herself together. We got the tissues out. She goes, so the reason these are so special, you know, and she still just can't talk. It's all coming out like that. And she says, you know, it's that mom gets these for you when you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. And she got these for us for good luck. 
So then Brian, who is pretty stoic, just has like the gulp moment yeah. and is sitting there and you could tell he's just trying to hold it together. Right. So it was, I mean, it was just sweet. And honestly, it was not long after that, that they got pregnant. I think the next year, the next year at Christmas, um, she was pregnant with Carter and they did not know quite yet, but we were also pregnant. So, oh, wow. and we shared on that Christmas mm -hmm. after everything was done because everybody got stuff for their baby mm -hmm. and, you know, we wanted it to be their day and we were kind of keeping it quiet. Right. Um, but after everything was done, we told, and my sister-in-law is like, why didn't you tell us ahead of time? We can't all. And I'm like, it was your turn mm -hmm. to be the pregnant woman. Right. So, I've been the pregnant woman. I'm okay. That's awesome. Oh, uh, last year. So we told, um, we told our parents on Thanksgiving that we were pregnant. And so Christmas was whenever I told, I told you that we go to my uncle's house, um, on Christmas day. And so it's my aunt and uncle, and then my, uh, my grandpa and his wife, and then my cousins. Uh, and so we told them last year uh, at Christmas that we were pregnant and oh my gosh, my mom was just so excited to let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> and she wanted us to like I think my mom just wanted us to walk in with a sign that says, please congratulate <laughs> us. We're having a baby because <laughs> my mom just wanted to talk to everyone about it. And she's been keeping it a secret for a month, you know? Um, but my, uh, my cousin that I'm probably closest to, she had to work that day. And so she was getting ready to go to work. So she wasn't upstairs in the family room whenever we got there. So I was like, um, we have to wait until she's up here so that I can tell everyone at one time. And so like, here she comes walking up the stairs into the family room and my mom's like, Keisha has something to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I tell everyone, everyone's excited. There hasn't been a baby on my, on that side of the family since uh, my cousin who's now a high schooler, my youngest cousin who's a high schooler, not since she was a baby. So um, so everyone's all excited <laughs> and my aunt comes over, <laughs> she hands us our present. It's a bottle of wine. She's like, well, I guess you're not gonna be having this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think this story that I probably intended to tell you guys is that, um, I, and it really happened at, I was trying to think, it did not happen at Christmas because we had already told, um, when I was pregnant with Katie, that was the first grandchild on Jeff's side. Mm. And I had had this dream that we were at his family's and that everybody opened something up and they were all baby gifts. Mm -hmm. And so I told Jeff about that. And, you know, of course we decided we would just do that. So we bought all of these baby things and we wrapped them all individually. And when we were together between Thanksgiving and Christmas, we said, okay, um, we, we have something that we want to give you guys. We have a present for each of you. And Jeff's mom got the um, birth announcement kit, but Jeff's dad got a um, mug. Um, and it, it was something about grandpa. And we handed out all these things and everybody's getting things. There was a little bonnet that was made out of a handkerchief that we had bought and Jeff's sister had been with us. So we gave it to her to open. And I mean, we had little things that should have kind of triggered everybody. And the most fun part was that they all opened their package 
and they each look at their package and look at somebody else's package and they're looking around, you know, but Jeff's dad opened his, looks at it and he goes, oh, and everybody looked at him and then they're like, oh, so <laughs> it was really fun because they just, they had no clue and yeah. Wow. It was good. That so, so that funny. was kind of, I think that's what I was thinking of when I said that to you, but it was in between the two times. Yeah. Oh man, having babies in July is just the best because you get to tell everyone about it on holidays, right? Yeah. <laughs> I have both my babies in July. So my birthday's in July. I like that month. Yeah. Right, right. My Although, birthday's in July and so is James's. So. Yeah. <laughs> Although being pregnant clear into July is not always such a, such a fun time, right? <laughs> well, that's what my, I was born on the last day of July and I was a week late. So oh. <laughs> my mom's like, yeah, it's not easy. And then I had a brother who was born at the end of August. So. Oh my. <laughs> so yeah, not the best time to be pregnant whenever it's really, really hot outside. <laughs> yeah, definitely doesn't help with swelling. Yeah. No not at all. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that brings me to the end of the questions. I'm sure that we could just talk about Christmas stuff all day, okay. but um, happy Hanukkah if you celebrate Hanukkah. Yes. So I hope you had a great, a great um, holiday. And for those of you who celebrate Christmas, it's coming up. <laughs> it is. So. Same with Kwanzaa. If you celebrate Kwanzaa, if you celebrate anything else, the happy festive season everyone and if you don't yeah. celebrate happy the end of 2020 <laughs> <laughs> oh all of my um all of my muslim kids at school are always like hey we love that you have that because it means we get to have time off from school <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, i love my little kids they're so fun so so just a reminder, I'm working on this and this is where I got to this time. I don't know if the candy cane will stay where it is. It might move. I don't know. You'll just have to see next time. <laughs> yeah, you have to see how that works into finishing off the rest of it, right? Yep. I am going back across the row and I will go ahead and show you guys this because it's, I only need six more half crosses. So I think Keisha will let me finish those outside of showing you. Yeah, sure. That's fine. <laughs> okay. So remember that's mine. I'm doing the green one. And this is how far I am. Very nice. So it's pretty cute. Yes, it's great. I'm having fun with them. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I guess that's it for us today. And we will see you next week with a regular floss tube, everyone. Yes. It'll be fun. Bye. Bye. Have a good week. <laughs>